Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about the Mars Trilogy. Now, of course, um, or as some of you are probably going to more recognize as the uh, John Carter books from the uh, <clears throat> less than, um, you know, decent, you know, Disney film. You know, well, this is the one that, this is the, what the, uh, what that movie is essentially based on. Specifically, the, uh, f more or less the first book, The Princess of Mars. <clears throat> and, uh, and, you know, like, considering how old the, this book is, you know, the, uh, collective, uh, I mean, the overall, uh, uh, you know, books here is, um, were published in, like, 1912, 13, and 14, so I'd say that's definitely long overdue, but, yeah, for lo those of you who, like, watched the movie, is said, um, <clears throat> you know, like, this movie sucks and it's boring and all that other stuff that I've heard, you know, rest assured that the books are much better. And, as of course, the sequels are also really good, too. <clears throat> of course, uh, being uh, written in uh, 1912, 13, and, or released in 1912, 13, and 14, Maybe there are going to be some, like, um, outdated speech fine type stuff, you know, there's going to be outdated science that, um, they would have in here that has, of course, been completely debunked. The most obvious being that, you know, Mars is not a habitable planet, but, <clears throat> and so, I think it's probably better to think of this as more or less on the lines of, like, a science fiction fantasy, I guess you could say. And a lot of it is still r really good, you know. This whole world is just such an interesting uh, place, you know. You have the Tharks that are going and wandering through the, um, through the, um, you know, the dried up seabeds and taking the occasional refuge in abandoned cities. You have the, you know, the Red Martians that are in their cities, you know, working with the uh, plants and like uh, oxygen plants and what have you to keep the place habitable you have the you know and then in the sequel you we meet the uh, white therns and the black pirates of barsoom you know and eventually in the third book we run into the yellow martians you know and like that we all we see this whole uh <clears throat> really just and this, and we constantly, uh, we see this sort of like really interesting type of uh, world that's just being, you know, shaped up and developed and more is revealed up to it, you know. Um, the only like really, um, what I call a kind of a flaw would be like, um, like a sort of like some of the, the story type stuff can get, can feel, um, almost uh, repetitive like uh, for example like how many times uh, John Carter's love interest Deja Thoris gets kidnapped you know like you know first she, when he first meets her she's uh, kidnapped by the Tharks you know but you know so it's he's also sort of their captive so whatever but then like she's kidnapped by like a rival a red Martian you know clan or whatever so they um he gets, you know, all of the Tharks together and, like, they save her. <clears throat> but then, you know, and, like, well, the first uh, book, um, much different from the movie, kind of ends on a bit of a bittersweet type of bummer, bummer note. You know, um, <clears throat> the next time we see, um, uh, you know, Deja Thoris, like, she's is in the second book and, like, She's like we don't even actually see her. She's just immediately kidnapped by the black pirates, and then you know, I don't even think we see her. <clears throat> and then in um, you know the very next one, you know she's uh, kidnapped by the um, by the yellow men of Mars, and you know, um, and then then of course there's like um like um well this it doesn't really apply to the first book but the second but the third one is kind of felt like a bit of a retread of the you know second book you know where um, <clears throat> like it involves just like these 
uh, people in this unknown part of Mars that, despite him spending like 10 or so years on Mars, we don't actually see them until like, um, I mean, he just still like doesn't really see much, which I guess I can see, but I kind of weird how like there's so many like unknown stuff, you know, you know, um, <clears throat> But even, even so, like, with all of the, like, uh, little flaws that could either be attributed to, uh, you know, maybe not aging all that well, but still aging decent enough to, uh, you know, just the constant damseling of a certain uh, female, of some of the female characters, like, it's still a very fun read, you know, lots of action, lots of, uh, Lots of interesting places to go, you know, interesting, like, this new sets of uh, cultures, the and the uh, overall history of the planet that is revealed over the course of the three books is actually really interesting and cool. <clears throat> overall, I give the <clears throat> Edgar Rice Burroughs Mars Trilogy a 4 out of 5. A comfortable recommendation. <clears throat> If you ever find it, check it out. It's a fun read, decent enough, and um, and just uh, yeah, it's just an entertaining, you know, decent good time. You know. Anyway, next time we're going to be taking a look at one of the coolest ideas for fantasy that I have personally ever seen with the Libriomancer. Oh uh, yeah. Until then, see you later. Keep yourselves awesome by going out and supporting your local bookstores and libraries with your patron patronage donations, mut donations, um, money, and so on and so forth. And have a nice day.